didn't exactly intend for to do an entire video just on the White Witch. This just, just kind of happened. And this video will basically be about everything else that came out of this screening. Uh, some of it's good, you know? Some of it's good. It really is. And but a lot of it is the stuff that's bad is like, oh, man, that sounds really bad. Um, the White Witch was the worst of it. But moving on, uh, the first clip talks about apparently Susan makes a brief appearance um, writing a letter to Lucy and Edmund. Interesting. And apparently... Uh, Lucy and Edmund had been at Eustace's house for some time. 253 days, in fact. He's been counting. Um, interesting. I'm not sure, quite sure what the reason for that is. Uh, and Susan and, and the family are having trouble getting back because of some border issue with World War II. Interesting. Trying to, you know, keep the historical context in mind. So, um, you know, just Lewis has kind of a paragraph or two explaining where everybody is. So this is just kind of the way to visually interpret that. Makes sense, I think. So I'm okay with that. And Eustace writing the letter and comparing them to, like, you know, bugs on a card, you know, interesting. Sounds like it could be kind of cheesy, but it is something in the book and could tell us a lot about his character, you know? Okay. Uh, Eustace, uh, Reba Jeep reviving Eustace on board the Dawn Treader. I love the idea of Eustace waking up and he's got Reba Jeep standing on his chest and just, ah, you know, what a great way to sort of start the tension between those two characters. Uh, I'm actually really looking forward to that scene. Um, there's a, they have the scene from the book where Reba Jeep is telling Dragon Eustace stories about other dragons. I like that. Uh, according to the writer of this particular report, uh, it looks like on the Duffelpuds Island, Cassidy wakes up and Lucy's gone. And he's, the, the writer says, it appears that Lucy has been kidnapped. doesn't mean she has been kidnapped. It just means it appears that she's been kidnapped, according to this guy. It could be that maybe somehow the, the invisible Duffelpuds um, come to Lucy, somehow have a private word with her and um, say, hey, will you come do this for us? And Lucy doesn't want to tell the others because she knows um, they won't let her do it. They won't let her risk her life. So she decides to um, go do it without telling them. Now, that's a, that would be a really important distinction for being kidnapped because in the book, it's a noble and heroic act that Lucy makes the decision, I, I'm, this is scary, but I'm going to do it because it's the only way that we're going to save, save everybody here. If she was kidnapped, forced to do it, all the nobility is gone of what she's doing. I have a similar issue with this whole having to... I, I hope that the reason they're setting out in the first place is not to destroy the White Witch and save Narnia or whatever. Because it takes away from the nobility of Caspian's character. That out of a sense of personal responsibility, my uncle, my, the Telmarine people have... You know, been messing up Narnia for centuries. It's kind of my responsibility as you know a, a Telmarine to try to right those wrongs as best I can. Therefore, I have to go and try to find the seven lords that my uncle ban um, sent out, or in the movie that they've been exiled after the war. I'm not sure what that means. Um, so, and this is such a uh, this is not that surprising. This is happening in Hollywood more and more that we can't have characters who do the right thing because it's the right thing. Like Caspian in the book, he's, he's f trying to find the Lords because it's the right thing to do. A sense of personal responsibility, not because I have to do this or else I'm, to save our, my own skin, basically. To save Narnia from being destroyed. It's just a shame that we can't really believe those kind of characters could exist anymore. And I was really, that was one of the things I was excited about when Narnia was, made into, Narnia was being made into a movie was, oh, we can finally get those kind of characters back. And that's what I felt like Douglas Gresham was kind of talking about, you know, a return to those things. Well, I got excited, but we haven't really seen that, you know? So that would be a really important distinction. Corey Aachen's dialogue is, I was just kind of going like this, reading it. Like, it's, it looks so, now we can't, this guy, I'm sure this guy is just paraphrasing, but, so you can't th think this is the exact dialogue he's going to say, but the, his dialogue sounds awful. He tells the Dark Island is a place where evil lurks. It can make your darkest dreams come true. And he says that, I, um, let's see. Until you lay down the seventh sword, evil has the upper hand. It will do everything in its power to tempt you. Don't fall into temptation. To defeat the darkness out there, you must defeat the darkness inside yourself. I didn't write it, folks. That's what's in there. Um, <laughs> don't fall into temptation. Gosh, so much for subtlety. Afraid that for all the morons and small children in the audience that won't get what the theme of the movie is, they evidently, it just seems like they don't have faith in their ability to convey this visually without having to look at the camera and say, this movie is about temptation, just so you know, in case you don't get it. Um, 
evil has the upper hand. So you lay down the seventh sword. A place where evil lurks. Um, so then, I'm not sure how Koryaki knows everything, but he tells them they have to go to Romandu's island, and the seventh sword has to be laid at Aslan's feet or his table, you know, whatever it is. Wow. I'm not sure what else to say about that. The subtlety's gone, and it sounds really, really cheesy. Defeat the darkness inside yourselves. Okay. Nothing wrong with having that idea in the movie, but actually saying it is like, okay. Um, Romandu's daughter, which we can call her now, because a lot of people were thinking that Romandu was going to get cut out of the movie because there was no casting announcement for Romandu. Not, not, Romandu, might, Romandu might still not be in the movie, but it is interesting that she it does introduce herself as Romandu's daughter. Interesting. Um, but so, so we don't have to just call her Lillian Dill anymore. We can call her Romandu's daughter in the film. But oh my gosh, there's this awkwardness with uh, Edmund and Caspian. They're both kind of attracted to uh, Romandu's daughter because she's so pretty. Oh my gosh, really? And it's one thing to have a character who's attract, have Caspian be attracted to Lillian Dill because of her beauty or other reasons or whatever. It's another thing to have them be act like middle school boys about it. And apparently Lucy even has a boys will be boys kind of thing. I hate this idea that all boys have to be girl crazy in movies. Again, you know, I, I was looking forward that there aren't any movies escaping this kind of thing. Like, why don't we have characters who aren't like that? Conforming to typical Hollywood crap, you know, is what this sounds like. How cheesy, you know, to have Edmund and Cassie. Like, oh, we're both kind of into this chick. Oh, it's so annoying. It's kind of the same thing with... With uh, Susan and, and Caspian. Well, all the glances just came across, ooh, a sexual tension here, you know. It's, and there's a way to have characters kind of be attracted to each other. Like, like Faramir and Eowyn in Lord of the Rings, Turn of the King, the extended cut, they weren't just, wow, you're hot, let's hook up. You know, they felt like they, they found an emotional connection in their short time together. It kind of worked. Um, so this is just cheesy. This is the easy way out. Why are they together? They think, he, they think she's hot. Whatever. Typical Hollywood crap. The Sea Serpent is going to fight Dragon Eustace. This is finally confirmed. I'm running out of time here. But that sounds like it's going to be an awesome scene. I, I've explained before why I like the idea of having uh, Dragon Eustace fight the Sea Serpent. You know, it's, we can, now we've, Eustace has been so annoying for the whole movie. Now we can actually start cheering for Eustace. Um, that's cool. And um, they say that the Sea Serpent is, um, is actually might, might possibly be too scary for kids. I think that's really awesome. Yes, they're not shying away from it. I think the sea serpent's probably going to look really cool. The concern here is that it's going to look like Eustace is earning his transformation. That would be really, really important. That'd be a huge change. The whole point is that Eustace has to, after being such a prideful know-it-all, has to lie down and say, I can't do this. Someone else has to do it for me. Huge character moment in the book. If they make it look like Eustace somehow earned it back, um, that's just giving them the wrong idea. Hopefully, him attacking the sea serpent will come across as not something he has to do to be transformed, but a reflection that he has changed. And now he's ready for Aslan to transform him. Not that he's actually done anything. So he's learned his lesson, basically. It's not that attacking the sea serpent, oh, now that I've done this, I can be transformed. It's that it's a reflection of the fact that he's kind of already been transformed internally. So that's a really... Hard that's a really important distinction. I hope they get that across. Overall, my expectations for Dawn Treader are kind of at an all-time low right now, like uh, Benarni Weber wrote. The first half sounds like it could be good. Everything else sounds like rubbish. Sounds terrible. So uh, at the moment, I'm expecting Dawn Treader to be decent at best. This sounds ridiculous. This also something I like the design. I think the actors look cool. There's just some things to... Oh, there should be some cool elements in this movie, but right now I'm just kind of going, I am not expecting to like this movie. It's hard to believe the movie could be as bad as it sounds here. So I think a lot of people end up liking it for that reason. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, you know, but gosh. Um, probably should, I'm going to sit down, going to digest some of this, and we come back with some more thoughts in the next video. So until then.